And on some levels, it, it's a really good metaphor that we are playing a game. Mm. We are the character in the game. The oversoul chose to play the game. The controller, the, the, the controller you would use to play the game, yeah. that's the higher self. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm repairing the cable that the remote control is. So we're down here in the game and we're cut off from the controller, from the guidance that the, the, the higher self has to offer. So we're in the game. We think we're alone. We're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And, but the, the, the higher self is sending us signals like, Hey man, no, 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 not that. That's not, that's not in your best interest. Like, you know, like it, it's giving us signals, but the, the communication, that cable that's connecting the, the remote control to the game is glitchy. And so my job is to repair that cable. Hey, what's up? This is Anders with Mind the Shift. That's probably how my guest today would introduce this episode. I'm here with Case Parks. He's a cool dude from originally from Ohio. He used to be what you might call an everyday person, whatever that is. And who in his middle, early middle age, whatever that is, discovered that he had access to healing frequencies. And today he's a healing practitioner and also a spiritual guide with a popular website and YouTube channel with a beautiful name, Everyday Masters. And it's got a subtitle, Everyday People Awakening to Their Own Mastery. It's great to have you, Case. Thanks, man. It's, it's awesome to be here. Uh, just a pleasure to be on. You know, when I began my my present spiritual journey a couple of years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, I've, I've been on that, tried out that path on and off <laughs> during my life. But when I began this, this latest and hopefully final <laughs> spiritual awakening, your videos were among the first ones that I started following on, on YouTube. And uh, I mean, there are tons of wise spiritual teachers out there, but there was something about your... Uh, your uh, uh, everydayness, so to speak, the, the laid back, you know, simplicity or maybe directness in your message, message that resonated. And I guess that that is exactly what many people who are new to the spiritual awakening process need. Is that something you get a lot that you hear from your clients and other people? It is. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what it is and why I resonate with people um, I remember when I first started making videos, I thought that I was supposed to have new information. And I did have some new information for most of the people, but I, I guess I'm still trying to discover why I resonate with people. I mean, I, I it's, it's, it's kind of, I, I never <laughs> thought I would start a YouTube channel and have, you know, 55,000 people um following me so yeah. um it, it was quite shocking to me also <laughs> yeah but but people i i guess that many people tell you that they they like that kind of no normalcy that you that you seem to have and that that, that you speak as a regular person you, you don't sound like a spiritual teacher like Eckhart Tolle or somebody you yeah yeah sound like like the next door neighbor or something like that i think i'm, I'm i love Eckhart Tolle and I love all these incredible spiritual teachers. Um, yes. I guess I just have an ability to, I, I think really what it is, is I just, I have this ability for some reason to live these teachings. And I think that when I actually live these teachings of Eckhart Tolle, and you know, you can just, the list goes on and on. Um, I guess there's an authenticity to me. I'm not really trying to sell anybody or change anybody's mind. I'm just just describing my life and what I see in my life. And for some reason, it just resonates with people. Yeah. yeah. I never imagined that I would be a spiritual, um, have a spiritual channel. I, I really like, the, like if you would have told me 15 years ago 
um, everything that was going to happen in my life, I would have just thought you were smoking crack and there's just absolutely <laughs> no way that that, yeah, that would yeah. happen. So, um, but it's really yeah. wonderful how things happen, isn't it? I mean, it's, it is, it's, it's it magical. is magical. Life is magical. Yes, it is. I, I feel like I've been like the universe has almost just been leaving these breadcrumbs for me to follow. And I just follow them. And I've just found that my life has just become this magical experience. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it's just it's just amazing. I, I feel like I'm just in this constant state of evolution and my consciousness is expanding. And, you know, what I think I know now, you know, in probably 10 years, I you know, it just constantly just shedding this. Mm -hmm these beliefs that I have of, uh, you know, cause I mean, when I was in my early twenties, I knew everything. Yeah, and it's then, you know, <laughs> didn't we all know everything? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just, and, and I, I'm just really looking forward to seeing where it goes. I, I have, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's been a great ride so far. Yeah. I, I, w I went for a long brisk walk earlier today and listened to another Pretty very different kind of spiritual guide, uh, Bashar. I'm uh, you're familiar oh, with. Oh, I love Bashar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daryl Anka is channeling Bashar, and it's 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 always really great. And he was talking about these uh, the eleven uh, essentials of uh, excitement. I think it was called. So how how to how not to block the uh, what's going to unfold in your life by planning things or just yes. just follow your passion follow your heart and and realize and accept that you're not going to understand anything that's going to happen to you or you might you might well understand it when it happens but you you have no there's no no not an ice cube's chance in hell that you're going to understand exactly Absolutely. how it's going to unfold it's yeah. it's just going to happen and and uh, just just go with the flow uh, yeah so, you and you really need to hear that hear that often because I tend to forget sometimes. Yeah, I think that's one of the things we do need to hear often because we are really quick to forget. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll experience something amazing in our life, like absolutely that defies everything that we believe, and then you know, a week later, it's gone, and we don't we don't we don't even like realize that it, it happened. Uh, I used to be a really big planner. Um, in, in all the various careers that I had in my past. And what I realized was none of my plans ever worked out. They, they really didn't. Like every, like I was so focused on a very specific outcome and they never played out that way. And mm -hmm. so, you know, through, you know, I probably started my spiritual education, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. And what I've learned is, with my limited human consciousness, um, the greatest things I can ever plan or expect to experience in my life is absolutely the bottom of the barrel for my mm. higher self. So I've kind of just quit planning and I've just, I've really allowed myself to be pulled through my life by my passions and what excites me and to not be focused on specific outcomes. Because sometimes, you know, you, you, we're, we're, we get these feelings of excitement and we follow them and we, we expect them to play out a certain way. But maybe they're just to get us on a different path to a new stepping stone for another opportunity to come to us. So I, I really I feel like I'm kind of like floating through my life right now. Um, and I just know it like, you know, you know, you could use the. the the metaphor of a river, you know, I really feel like I'm, I'm floating down this river of life and I have complete trust and faith that the river knows where it's going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I, I just, and it's really, easier than, than trying to swim up upstream, isn't it? it? It absolutely is. And, you know, and, and I have swam upstream for decades. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I I've, I've kind of done it all. You know, I mean, I've swum upstream, I've clung to the sides. Uh, and what I've realized is that when you let go, um, that's really when the magic starts to happen in your life. And um, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because it's, uh, I, I mean, I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. And I, I kind of feel the same way now lately in my life. I think things are 
starting to happen in a very, very easy way that they didn't do before. But anyway, many people, when they hear this, they, they, they kind of uh, think that you're egotistical when you, when you live your life like this. But it's actually the other way around. But what do you tell? What do you tell these people? What do they have uh, wrong? I mean, how? What are they not understanding when they think that? Do they? I mean, the egotistical part would be to to cling to that you know what's going to happen, that you, and then you have this intellect that you know how things work. Um, Yeah, I, I would say that it's just the opposite. I, it's yeah. see, I really feel like we have this because because they're, have, they're talking about you know uh, duty. You have duties. You have to take care of people. You have to take care of your your work. You have to do things because you, yeah, you have plans. You have duties. Yeah. Well, why can't you do both? Like yeah. like if if your duty is not <laughs> if your duty is sucking the soul out of you. Um, Then you're you've lost it. You, you're 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 swimming upstream, like absolutely. Your duty is actually to follow your passions and to know that when you follow your passions, everything will work out. Like you, you we can make a living following our passions, and I don't care what that passion is. That if that passion is to raise the the vibrational state of the world or to sell Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if that is truly your passion and you follow that, the, the universe will make it to where you can make a living. Mm. Is, is that what you're talking about? Like make a living and like pay bills or like take care of your, your children or like, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about duties because I actually haven't had a real job in like probably almost 30 years. So I'm kind of out of the loop on yeah. duties. Like I, I'm not exactly so sure. So you would you wouldn't know what I'm talking about, would you? <laughs> I, I actually don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually just conveying what what other people say. I'm 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 not in that loop, so uh, that they are. But um, yeah, I'm I'm with you. But I have had a, a so-called ordinary job until about six months ago, or actually. Yeah. Yeah, about eight months ago, so then I quit it. Yeah, nice. So I'm I'm free now. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, Just because nice. you follow these passions, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's like the law of attraction. You still have to work. I mean, you, you still have to be productive. Um, That's not the problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes I think that people think, you know, when they talk about law of attraction and that you can just sit on your couch and like own in, like – a wonderful life. Well, you, you, you still have to take the action because we're in the physical world and mm -hmm. you know, you can only like meditate and pray for so long. You actually have to go out and do that physically mm -hmm. to, you, you have to live that. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the problems with when people are on the spiritual journey is It's almost like the people that go to church and they go to church and they feel all wonderful on Sunday. And, but then like the other six days or the other six and a half days, they're not really a good person. You know what I mean? They're very judgmental yeah. and they're not actually living that feeling they're having during those hour or two hours or however long churches. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not like a church goer, um, but they're not living it. And I think in the spiritual world, when you talk to people, you know, the, the concepts of like Eckhart Tolle and, and whoever, I mean, you know, you can go into the Bashar or the Sad Guru or, the, you know, there, there's tons of amazing teachers, mm -hmm. but you have to live it. Mm -hmm. you, you can't, you can't fake it. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start living it, then the results start showing in your life and you get this momentum going and you, and, and you like, I, I would never try to convince anyone that my beliefs are correct. I just live my beliefs. Yeah. I get, I get that. And then, so in that ways, I'm not really a teacher. I I'm, I'm probably more of an example. Mm. Of But that's the best way of teaching, I guess, to be. And, an and I think so. I Only think way. so. Yeah. Yeah, well, otherwise, like you say, if you go to church once a week and then the rest of the days of the week you're not a, a good person, then it's like an alibi going to church. Yeah, it's like uh, you know you're, you're you're buying your way out of the 
yeah, the the bad bad things. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about what you, what, what you actually do when you're a healer these days. You you mm-hmm. have this this healing uh, yeah, that's, practice, that's and, and 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 it's it's it came to you a few years ago. Let's get get back to that. But can you just tell us what's what is it? How do you do this? You 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 have it, access to these frequencies, and you use your hands as conduits, yeah, or how, how would you explain that? Um, it's absolutely so easy and natural for me to do this that I can only believe that I've done this in many, many other lives. I mean, I, it, it's really it's like there's it's like breathing to me. And the funny thing is, is this really started for me uh, 10 years ago. And if you would have told me <laughs> 10 and a half years ago that I was a healer, I would have just said, you know, I, you're 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 crazy. Like, I, I what are you talking about? Like, like, and in fact, I can honestly say that I don't remember one second. I don't remember ever in my life saying I want to be a healer. Never. Now I've always been pursue. I've always been a big pursuer of truth. Yeah. And I've I've always wanted to figure out why we're here. You know what's why are we here? What's going on down here? And you had the spiritual core within you. I had from- a spiritual core, and I was yeah. very resilient to the programming that we're all given. I mean, there, there's there's something deep in me that never that always rebelled against anything that I was taught. I mean, to the point where my mom and dad were both high school teachers, and I actually got expelled from the school my mom taught at because mm-hmm. I wasn't going to buy into their crap. Like, like mm-hmm. it was deep in me. And especially with religion, there was something so deep in me. I wasn't going to buy into that guilt and that sin and that idea of hell for one second. So throughout, I guess, really, when I was 25, my I remember, I you know, I was a golf professional from 18 to 25. Golf then, professional? Yeah. Golf professional. Yeah, that, that was my passion. And, well, you know, I will say that my dad was a golf professional. So when your dad drags you out to the golf course – Starting at like age six, you know, you, you, and it's just like the programming. We believe what our parents yeah. tell us. We believe. What, so my dad, but that was, was how you made, how you made a living. It was how I made a living. Yeah. I okay. traveled around playing in tournaments and I did teach, but I, I'm not a good teacher. I'm, you know, there, there's, there's people that teach you how to make art and then there's artists. And just because you're an artist doesn't mean you're a good teacher. You know what I mean? So um, I was more of a doer. I was more of a player than an actual teacher. But anyway, I, so after, after all the passion for golf disappeared, um, I decided to go to college. And I remember my grandma gave me a book on Edgar Casey, And it was the first time I'd ever read anything spiritual. And I read about, two chapters of it. And I said, Oh, this is real. Like it resonated so deeply. And I was like, how come nobody ever told me anything like this in my yeah. entire life? And that kind of got the ball rolling. So then I, you know, I, I pursued, and, and I will say that during that time, that's when I started like waking up to the fact of, of, of how programmed we are and how much we've been lied to. And ironically enough, like that's step one to waking up. And I think yeah. that's what we see happening in the world. Like people are, are going through this first step of awakening. And when they get pissed off. When they get pissed off. And, yeah. and I will say that, man, I wasted, I don't want to say wasted because I don't want to take back anything, but I will say that I spent decades in that victim mentality of like, if we would hang out within like 10 minutes, I would be telling you, of all this negative control that's going on. And so I really We're thought into I these, really, you know, the, the Illuminati ruling the world exactly, and all that. Exactly. And the cabal and like now it's yeah, yeah, yeah. that rabbit whatever. hole. Like that that's like baby steps. Like I don't really have I don't have like two seconds energy for that anymore. Because mm-hmm. now I truly just I, I truly understand how much we are controlling our life. So if I understand how powerful I am, why am I going to feed that system with my energy? Yeah. Like, like, and you know, so I, I don't really spend any, you know, one analogy I like is um, I like to use the matrix, you know, in Neo. Yes. Yes. And, I love and like, that. So the, the first level of awakening is like Neo, when he pops out of the pod, 
and he rips the cables off his back. Like that's kind of like the first level of awakening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people get lost there. And, and, and there's many people right now that are absolutely lost in these conspiracies. And it yeah. just really leads to like this victim. And Q, Q and the Q and oh, people. Oh shit, dude. Like I am oh, like, yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and, and the thing <laughs> about it is, is if you're focused on this QAnon thing, you know, if you want to talk about fake news, yes, of course, it's all fake. If you want to talk about the deep state, of course. But if you focus on that, you will, there will always be more. Mm -hmm. There will always, like, yeah. it never stops. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll keep pushing the date back to, like, mm -hmm. it, it never stops. You you will you will spend the rest of your life in that unless you pop out of that. Mm -hmm. And so the the awakening that I talk about in my channels, it's not when Neo pops out of the pod and rips the cables off. It's when Neo's laying dead on the floor, filled with bullets, and then he opens his eyes and he sees the code, and then he stands up and then and then they all aim their gun at him to fire, and he's like, no. No more. I'm done. Yeah. He moved past. Like they can't yeah. affect him anymore. And, mm -hmm. and and literally you can live that way when you, you there is a state, there is a spiritual awareness. It's almost like becoming a sovereign being. Like people can talk about the loom. Dude, the Illuminati cannot touch me. I don't give it like I'm not living in that reality. Mm -hmm. And I know people think. Oh, bullshit. We're all, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cuss. Um, I don't know if it, I, I won't cuss, but <laughs> it's I, okay. I know, I know it's people okay. like people have this idea that we're literally living in one reality. Mm. We're not living in one reality. If there's 7 billion people, we're living in 7 billion different realities. Yeah. I believe and, that too. And, and, and so, and I also, I think, I think really a key also is this idea of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And the multiverse is basically every single possible scenario is happening right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to fix this earth, there's already an earth where you're, where that's fixed. Yes, to, to yes. What, so your job is to literally focus on that mm -hmm. and to slide to that version of reality. You'll mm -hmm. never fix this earth. Mm -hmm. You hop onto that to, timeline. Yeah. You, you, you slide to a different earth. And I know that's really heady and it's impossible to prove, but I can tell you that if you live that way, this other stuff cannot affect you. It mm. absolutely cannot affect you. So mm. we'll go back to this, this frequency thing that I do. Um, so I had basically spent about 10, 15 years following, researching the field. Um, how we're all connected. You know, I was following people like uh, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden. Um, uh, uh, one of my favorite teachers of all times is Seth, the Seth channelings. I'm not sure if you're ever, you've ever heard. No, of that. I haven't. No, I haven't heard Seth. I, I know that you recommend Seth. Uh, so I'm yeah. uh, looking. Uh, I just talking about everybody. Bruce Lipton. I, I know. I just want to say that Bruce Lipton said that, or he says, has said several times that the, the film matrix that you're referring to, oh. it's a documentary. It's a documentary. It is. It's just beautiful. It, it, okay. It just is, to say it that. Is absolutely. It, it's yeah. a beautiful metaphor. And um, it it's was real. Bruce Lipton, so sorry. It, it, yeah. No, Bruce Lipton is absolutely amazing. And so anyway, I was cool. watching this. Um, I was watching this video called The Divine Matrix by Greg Braden. And it's this four hour presentation. It's on YouTube. It's absolutely amazing. And when I got done watching it, it was like two o'clock in the morning and I was jazzed out of my mind. I could not go to sleep. And so YouTube is like, hey, man, you like the divine matrix. You're going to like the living matrix, the science of healing. So I flipped it on and there's this guy and he's floating his hands over these people and they're having these healings, like real healings, like getting out of wheelchair type healings, like cancer gone type healings, like for real. And, and ironically enough, I didn't think to myself, ooh, I want to be a healer. Like, I swear, I never thought that. I really, in fact, to this day, I don't really think I'm a healer. I'm more like a spiritual cable guy or like a galactic <laughs> mechanic. Like, if, if you would see what happens That's to people, nice. when, when, like, it's out of this world. So it's, 
I'm very fortunate that my job, I see things on a daily basis that define, that defy what's possible and not possible in this world. So I don't even live in the, I don't even live in, in the reality that most people do because like what I do is literally impossible. And, mm. but yet I see it every day. So to me, that's, that's, that's the way reality works. I see the underlying energy of this. Like to me, the, the, the physical world is just the camouflage of the energy world that's really happening. And yeah. so it's an anyway, I'm just of some kind. Yes. Yes. So I'm just really, really blessed to have daily confirmation that there's another layer of reality that's, that's, the real result of this physical layer that we see. Anyway, I, I'll get back to this. So I, for some reason I go, you know what, dude, I got to read this guy's book. So I got, I, I buy his book and it's called the reconnection, heal others, heal yourself by Dr. Eric Pearl. So I start reading this book and I get about two, two chapters into this book and I just set the book down and I hold my hands up, palms facing palms. And all of a sudden my hands are magnets literally that they're magnets and whatever I do with one hand, I can feel with the other. And as I start pulling them away, it like, it's like my hands had like this two foot sphere around them. It was like, I could feel the field, you know, it's yeah. always talking, Oh, we're all connected. You know, we're in this field of consciousness. Well, I could literally feel this field that connects us all. And literally, it, it was like, I, I can't even, like, the, the second I felt it, I knew that I had been waiting my whole life for that moment. Yeah, like, yeah, everything yeah. I had been doing for the past 44 years was just fun. But this was what I do. Wow. And so, you know, I, I actually had created a, a, a situation where I, I worked at home. I, you know, I didn't have a boss or anything. So I started playing with these frequencies um, all the time, like like nonstop, because I didn't have to worry about a boss. But, going, but, sorry, did, did, you, you didn't feel these things in your hand before you read that book by Eric Pearl? Well, you, you know, it was interesting. Or, or, or did you, could you remember there, that you had felt it before? Or? I did, because there were times when I remember one time, but not really. I mean, I did, but... Something happened when I read the, the, this first, like, I, okay, it, it absolutely triggered. But I, for, for one example, I remember I, my wife told me to hang these blinds um, in our house. Mm -hmm. And so I get out my screw gun. And so I noticed I started putting up these blinds. And the second my hands would go above my head, they would start vibrating and like almost go numb. And so I put my hands down like, oh, my God, I got the worst blood circulation in the world. Like, like, like I was actually so scared that I didn't tell my wife. I, cause it was like, literally if I raised my hands above my head, they would just start vibrating. And, and, and I was like, it, it was freaking me out. And I actually didn't tell anybody um, ever. And it was only in retrospect that I realized that those were like little signs. And, yeah. and, and another thing is I, I, I didn't think I was a healer. But when I look back on my life, good, I was like a lucky charm for every single person in my life. Like I, I couldn't even, I, it was, it was, I, I used that. Like when I was a golf professional, I wanted to play on the PGA tour. Mm -hmm. Well, I never made it to the PGA tour, but every friggin' person that was my roommate ended up making it on the, like, it was like, I was this lucky charm for people. <laughs> And, but I took it as a negative thing. Like I was a failure. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like everybody I, else. Is a everybody else is getting every, like, it, 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 yeah, I, I always took it personal. Like, Oh God, it was almost like I was cursed yeah. that everybody I knew would like stumble into great fortune or great, you know what I mean? But I never did. You know, So it was really weird. So anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm playing with this frequency and I noticed it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And so I, I eventually I was like, well, you know, I got to do this on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, why am I just doing it myself? Like, I, I think I'm supposed to do this on other people. 
And it was really ironic that the universe had set up, set up my life that all of my closest friends had crazy dramatic experiences the second they laid down and I started. Like one would leave their body. The, like it was insane what was happening. And ironically enough, you know, I, I have many sessions where people don't feel anything. So if, if, could you imagine if I would have went to like five of my closest friends and said, hey man, lay down and they wouldn't have felt anything. Like I would have doubted it. You know what I mean? It was almost like the yeah, universe yeah, yeah. set it up mm -hmm. for me to own mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. And um, and what I found interesting was, is, is as soon as I got reconnected, I started being drawn to this new information about like this, this idea of volunteers and this idea that, that certain beings of consciousness um, had decided to come to earth on this mission to raise the frequency of the planet, almost to usher in this, this golden age of mankind. Yeah. And my last 10 years have only verified that that, that, that is the case. I mean, um, I remember when I, when I, when I first got, to, when I first got trained to do this work and then I actually ended up becoming a teaching assistant. I actually traveled with uh, Eric's team to teach other people how to do this. Um, I was always amazed how many people would show up at these seminars and you got to pay good money. You know what I mean? Like it's not cheap, dude. Like if you mm -hmm. like back in the day, it was like 1100 bucks to go learn how to do this work. And I was just always amazed that literally like a third of the people that would show up and pay this money had no idea why they were there. Okay. Like, it was like a plumber, they were just or an electrician. Yeah. They were like, it was always this freak accident. I, I remember I would like be reconnecting people like in the, in their hotel room. Yeah. And I would be like, so, you know, when, when you read the book and they're like, I, I didn't read the book. And I'd be, you didn't read the book. Huh? <laughs> I was like, okay, well, why, why are you here? Why did you just spend 1100 hours? And they'd be like, well, it was so weird, man. It was like, it was like a Friday afternoon and I didn't have anything to do. And my neighbor said, Hey man, you want to go with me to see this present? It was always these crazy synchronicities that led these people. Yeah. And as soon as they got there, it was like me when I read that book and I felt these, I knew. But were, were those kinds of, were those, were those people more affected by these frequencies than others? Certain people seem to be, I mean, the ones that seem to be drawn to it without knowing why they were there, where they may be even affected um, more. I would or say maybe, those, yeah. I, I would say, yeah. I, I would say, yeah, because something feels so right. Like, it, it's literally, it was life-changing for me. I, it, like, it, it was, and, and what it really did for me was there's one, there's one thing to believe, oh, we're made of energy, you know, we're all connected and we're all one. And there's one thing to believe that. But I was the kind of person that needed proof. And even when I would like make an intention and I would like try to, I would, I would attempt to manifest something in my life, even when I would manifest it, I would doubt it. I'd be like, oh, what a coincidence. Oh, that's weird. Like, how'd that happen? Mm -hmm. But it was almost like I could not get enough proof to, to own it, to live it 100% of my day. You know what I mean? Like what, what would happen is I would be in my, you know, I would see all, we're all connected. But then something would happen and it would pop me out. And I would, you know, I would, I would become the victim again for a day or a week or a month. But for some reason, these frequencies, I just don't pop out anymore. Like I, I accept, like there's, I would like I haven't had a bad day. I'll have a bad hour, but I haven't had a bad day in years. Like yeah. I can't, I can't even Wonderful. remember having a, a a full bad day because, mm. and I'm just very fortunate and very blessed. I'm very grateful that I remember who I am and why I'm here, and I'm really just here to anchor this frequency on and to speak my own truth and that those who resonate with that truth will be drawn to me. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I, I just am very fortunate to have a beautiful life. And, and I'm not talking about, like, I'm not rich. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, you know, I know a lot of rich people and dude, they're not really that happy. And no. if they are awesome, like that's, you know, we're like, I, I'm really, really happy for them. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think really my whole thing is, is to, is to remind people, like, I don't really push this frequency thing because I think the, the right people will be drawn to it. You know what I mean? It's not something like, I don't go up to people and say, Hey man, I have this frequency coming through me that's reconnecting your DNA and it's going to increase that, that, that guidance you have from the non-physical and you're going to stop doubting yourself and you're going to start trusting you. Like, I don't really say that, you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> because it sounds like a lunatic, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, 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 I just, I but don't. People- People come still. People come to you, and they they've read the testimonials on the website, perhaps, or they heard other people talk about you. So they they yeah. kind of trust that you're you're doing something. They don't know what you're doing, but you're doing something good. And, they, <clears> and it, it actually affects everybody differently. Yeah. Because can, can we talk about that? Yeah, because what you're, you're doing, you're using your hands, or do you, you need know to what? use your hands, the, or maybe you could do this without your hands? I know you, you don't do need your hands. sessions. You don't need your hands. Okay, you, I know don't. you do remote sessions as well. People not being present. See, that, physically. Yeah, I would say that 80% of my sessions are through distance. And the funny thing is like, that's what I'm talking about is like, people are like, well, how do you do that? It's like, like, no dude, we're connected at yeah, all yeah, yeah. times. I mean, that's literal. That's not just So like, you're not actually doing anything. You're just opening something. You're helping yes, the field to like, open up to connect. I, I I always love when people are like, I know I know it's a big thing to take in, and to me it's like breathing, like like it's it, it's something that is such a it's it it's that truth that we're all connected is at the foundation of my belief system. So it, it's it's like it's such at the core that I don't even know how to like I don't even know how to tell people like we're connected, like it's. <laughs> It, you know what I mean? It's almost like evident. It's just yeah. It's just like it's like a it's like that one thing where um, you got the big fish and he's swimming by the two little fish, and the big fish goes by. He's like, "Hey man, how's the water?" And then the little fish keeps swimming, and they're like, "Water? What's water?" It's yeah. like <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I it's such yeah. the core. Mm-hmm. Like I like I had this interview with this guy uh, a month ago. And I could tell he was kind of re- resistant to what I was saying because it does uh, sound crazy. And like, I don't even care. Like, I'm not trying to prove anything. And and we brought up the idea of uh, – I brought up the idea of reincarnation. Mm-hmm. And he, like, quickly, like, oh, well, reincarnation, that that opens up. And I immediately I was like, oh, I, I don't even know what to say now. Like, if, if – like, reincarnation is like – spiritual like 101 like that would be like the you know like if you don't understand that our our consciousness we've done this we've had millions of experiences throughout the galaxy if you think that you never existed Mm -hmm. before this life Mm -hmm. like your your consciousness didn't like i don't even know where to start no 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 i i agree i mean these things don't make any sense in that case i mean it's it's really i mean there's there's actually research going on about these things. Today I, re- I was reading, I'm, I'm actually, I am reading because I'm going to interview Pim van Lommel, a Dutch uh, uh-huh. researcher. He's, he's uh, doing science on near-death experiences and mm-hmm. uh, what people are, are experiencing and what he's writing about. And he's a cardiologist and he writes these papers which are published in, 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 in peer-reviewed, uh, you know, whatever. So it's, it's, it's uh, mainstream science and they are, they are coming to conclusions that are, uh, I mean, they're they're actually opening the door to to the possibility that that that, that we're not uh, we, we don't die when the body dies. Yeah. So there is yeah. there is a non local consciousness out there. Consciousness yeah. is not in the brain. It's not localized in the brain. Yes. It's somewhere yeah. else, and it's 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 not even it's not even uh, non mainstream anymore. Actually, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty really crazy cool. when you meet people who don't believe these things. Uh, it, it's 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 like you're looking at a caveman. You're like, wow. Like, yeah. I, I try to put I try to put myself in their perspective. And to imagine what it would be like to think that you never existed until your mom and dad had sex 
And that now you're like, it just, it's mind boggling it is. what people think. And, you know, and then we can go into Christianity. I mean, you know, there's actually like people believe in a hell, like <laughs> they're afraid to go to hell. Like, could you imagine that? I, I just can't even like, that is like a level of naivety that I just, it, it just blows my mind. That, mm -hmm. And in America, you know, we probably have, 60 million people that believe that i mean yeah yeah sometimes i wonder with these people and and, and the, these christians i kind of think like do, do you read the bible like have you Me? ever read what jesus said <laughs> you know what I mean? like, people, yeah those people yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so anyway let's let's get back to uh probably haven't they, they probably haven't they just yeah they're just conditioned to believe those things yeah 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 and and i i i I, I and and so I guess for people like that, if they were to experience these frequencies, the first step they would go through would be to start to question these insane programming that they have. Like things would start not making sense for them. So I guess mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, some people when they are experienced these frequencies, they immediately just remember. They, they, they just, they, they step into who they are and they remember the power that they have and how they're creating their life. Mm. Whereas other people um, that is really bought into this programming and they're completely asleep, it would, it would start them to question their programming and it would mm. like things wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't just accept things anymore. They would start to question it. And then, so and, then one, yeah. people, mm. and then you have people that have been when they were young, um, they were really hurt and they were, tra you know, they've had traumatizing experiences where they're, you know, I, I really think that one of the biggest problems in our world is um, a lack of love. I, I think that children who are not shown love, you, they really start putting up these walls to protect themselves. And you keep, when you keep putting up these walls, It's these frequencies have this way of breaking through the cracks and dissolving these walls. But if you have, if you've been building walls your whole life, it's going to take a little bit more time for you to step into owning, loving yourself, to, yeah. to trusting yourself, to trusting this inner guidance. So that's what I mean is, is these frequencies seem to affect everybody differently because we're completely different. Um, so this is what I you have, see among your clients when you do, when you float your hands over them or yeah. whatever you do remotely or in the room, they react like uh, they're sometimes they're, they, they seem healed when they wake up or whether sometimes, sometimes it's absolutely immediate. Absolutely. Yeah. immediate, And sometimes um, even physical, physical healing. Have you had? Oh yeah, before? absolutely. Absolutely. I, I absolutely put no limitations on these frequencies and these sessions because I'm not doing it. If you think that I'm doing it, then you're, you're, you don't get it. Like this is the universe. This is literally, it's almost like these frequencies are like a tool from God. And for some reason I'm like a mechanic and I know I, it's like, I'm very comfortable using this tool to help people break free from themselves, you know, like basically. Um, and that's why I consider myself like more of like, like, I, you know, I, I think it's like, like almost like a spiritual cable guy because I used to do, I used to give a session and I don't do this anymore, but I used to, I, I would give a distance session and we would talk for like 20 minutes and then I would give like a 30 minutes session and then I would call them back and I would, I would talk to him and be like, okay, so what did you experience? You know, do you feel whatever? I would just yeah. talk to yeah. them about what they experienced during the session, which yeah. is, I never really saw the purpose in that. It was just something I was trained to do. It was like, oh, did you see purple? You know, like, <laughs> I, like or you felt tingling. Oh, you talked to a, you know, nine foot. Nikola, Nikola Tesla. One, I saw one guy who said <laughs> Nikola <laughs> Tesla. He met Nikola well, yeah, Tesla yeah, yeah, yeah. during during exactly. a session. So yeah. what am I supposed to say about that? Like, yeah. uh, he, like that's for him. That mm. that's 
that's him. Like the first session I ever gave was with my wife. And I literally, after the session, I said, what did you experience? And she said, I just had a 25 minute conversation with a nine foot cricket in a purple robe. What the hell? <laughs> how, how am I like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. That's for her. All I know is she felt the most loving experience. It felt like a father figure and she felt completely um, at one with mm. life. So mm. I, I just don't see how me talking afterwards about the session, about their experience is really other than to validate that it actually happened. But anyway, um, so I used to call them and then I started noticing that when I would call them, they wouldn't pick up the phone and then I'd wait five minutes and then I would call them again and then they wouldn't pick up the phone. And then, and it kind of became like a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? Like I got, I, I was like, dude, I'm, uh, the session's done. I, I have things to do. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know what I mean? Like, like literally I got, you know, I got three kids, you know, I, I got things mm -hmm. to do. I don't want to keep calling. And then what happened is, is, is when I would actually get through to them, they would say, oh, it was your phone call that broke me out of it. And I'm like, oh, so they just I'm, continue done for, session. Yeah. I'm done for 20 minutes. I've literally had people that I, when I got through to them, I was at the grocery store. I, I'm standing in line at the grocery store and they're like, <laughs> uh, oh, you, 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 they're, you, they're still in it. You just broke me out. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I, I'm I'm at the grocery store. Like how how is it? And so what I realized is my job. We all have this connection with the non physical aspect of ourselves. You know, you could say stores. You could say higher self. Obviously, the higher self would be an intermediary intermediary between you and source. And then like your oversoul would be like the next level. But we have this connection with the non physical part of us. And literally my job as a, as a practitioner of this is to repair that connection. Mm -hmm. And once that connection's repaired, you have your own connection. Mm -hmm. Now, is it completely repaired in one session? Sometimes it is, man. Sometimes it is. But sometimes it's not. And like I said, it's, it, it, it's, it's so individual. Like if you've, if you've had a, just a, a horrendous life and you build up walls your whole life and you've been told your whole life you're a sinner and to not trust your feelings, well, dude, you're not going to get that connection back as fast as someone that already trusts themselves, as someone that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and that's actually why I do my, my daily sessions. Um, my group sessions. And that's another thing, it, 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 you know, one of these, one of the things that are, are we over time? Are we cool? Can I keep talking? No, no, we're cool. We can, we can talk for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or okay. 30 minutes. doesn't matter okay. for, to me. If you, if you have time, we can do I have, that. I have no sessions today. I'm, I'm, I'm totally cool. Yeah. Totally cool. Perfect. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was uh, saying. So <laughs> I can't remember where you were. Well, you were talking about these, um, uh, People, people still being in it when you were in the grocery oh, yeah, store yeah, yeah. And, and called them and tried to, yeah. So, so you know, if you look at these spiritual teachers, they're really all saying, "You must know thyself," yeah. and really, how you know thyself is to start letting go of these beliefs that we have about our world because they're just beliefs, they're just limited beliefs, they're just keeping us in this box. And so as we shed these limited beliefs, we adopt new beliefs that are bigger, but they're still just a bigger box. You know mm. what I mean? And mm. so one of the things I love, what I really have loved about myself since discovering these frequencies is my ability to treat beliefs like Legos. Like they're not the truth of the world. They're They're what I use to create my experience of the world. And so I just, I love when I find limiting beliefs and I, I do it every day. I mean, I, well, maybe not every day, but I do it all the time. I'm always finding these limited beliefs that I have. And it's amazing. You can let go of tons and tons of beliefs, but then we, you hold on to 
okay. certain stupid little beliefs. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, mm. And, and and so and one of those beliefs was you know I was I was trained that you know that this work is a one on one experience, yeah. and so I had you know it's me and the client and source yeah. and. I'm like the, the, the antenna where the, 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 inf, the information and light that you need is coming through me to them. And so I'm kind of passive. You know what I mean? Like I, I, you can think of like a radio tower. Like, you know, the radio tower is not choosing what song to play. It didn't write the music. It's not playing any instruments. It's simply a channel for, for the music to come through. Um, so that's the way I kind of approach it is, is I'm simply a spiritual cable guy. I'm a spiritual cable guy. Exactly. So, um, I remember I had several people and probably for various reasons, you know, probably some of them were financial. Um, but I had several people and they would say, Hey man, um, can you give a session to me and my husband or can you give a session to me and my girlfriend at the same time? And for eight years, I was like, oh, no, of course not. Why? I, I, I can't do that because that would dilute it. Like, how can it go to two people? It, you know what I mean? Like, that was my belief. And I owned that. And I never allowed anybody. I never did, like, two people at the same time. And then, thank God that I trusted this, this inner guidance or inner voice. Not like I hear a voice. You know what I mean? It's just something I feel. I feels right. And I act on that. You know, some people actually hear voices. I don't hear voices. Um, some people can see the energy. I don't see energy. I, I don't, I just, I just feel it. So um, in some, in some regards, you could say that my, my, my specialty and my, my gifts are limited because I don't actually see energy. And I, you know what I mean? Like I don't have this communication where my higher self is speaking to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, um, that's One really day I, key. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just a mechanic, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, just so, frequencies uh, in my hands, you know. Yeah, it's and actually, whatever. it's funny. It's not it's not coming through your hand. It's actually it's just there. It's there. I mean, you could say it's coming through your eyes. Uh, I think there's definitely something to that that it's really coming through because I noticed that when I give the session. I, if, if I give a 30 minute session, I'm probably going to blink. I, I mean, I could literally probably go 30 minutes without blinking. Mm. Uh, and it's oh, really? weird because I blink in normal life. I just blink. Yeah. But for some reason, when I'm doing the sessions, I'm so like out of it kind of in a way. And I don't mean out of it. Like you're conscious, you're, you're there, you know what you're doing. I'm and conscious, I'm but, present, uh -huh. but I can also have like stupid thoughts going through my head that's mm -hmm. not affecting the session. Like I could be thinking what I got to get at the store after the session. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I got to go get some lettuce and I got to get some milk. And Oh, you uh, can really have those thoughts at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely. And when I notice those, um, I, then I go back. But I... I after giving so many sessions, I honestly don't really think that that affects the session because mm. I've had so many profound, my, I've had so many clients have profound experiences mm. when my mind was wondering, like, like my mind's wondering, but my, my presence with the sensations and my presence with them in front of me mm. doesn't waver. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like literally yeah. there's a, like a compartmentalization going mm. on there. And, and one thing, if, if I ever do find myself wondering, like thoughts coming through my head, I would never think, I would never like beat myself up. No, the, the, no we should do because, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, we, do know, that it, too, we do that too much all the time yeah, because yeah, yeah. It, oh, it's supposed to be a certain way. So we get anxious yeah. when, when we can't yeah. handle that. Because the second I think that I would be screwing up, that's when it would affect it. You know what mm. I mean? Like that like that questioning the process would would, if, would would affect the process more than simply me being present and um yeah so anyway uh so i'm making this video and this is one of my favorite limited beliefs that i let go of uh i 
I have a bunch of them, <laughs> but, but for some reason, this one, it, it was like so revolutionary to me because I was making this video and I got done with the video and there was a part of me, it's like, you know what, let's do an experiment. Let's see if you can give 10 people a session at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I, I flipped my camera back on. I was like, you know what, let's do an experiment. The first 10 people that leave their name and their, what country they're in, I'll give you a session on like Saturday, like 12 o'clock Pacific standard time. And so I just added that to the video and then, and I, and I didn't think anything of it. And then the next day I went and checked and there was 500 people that had left their name and their country. Yeah. And then I was like, well, why would I say 10? What a wimp. What a, what a, yeah. I won't even use the word. I mean, how could you, how could you know? So I, I won't even like, I, I, I so please, every, every person on the earth, on the face of the earth, please join my. Now, now, I, I think now that's interesting because, you know, some people would say, well, why don't you just do that? Like, why don't, why don't you just send it out to a state or a country? The thing is they have to be the receiver. Mm -hmm. They would, they have to like, you, they have to go, they, they have to participate. They have to lay down or, 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 or consciously say they want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Like it, it can't, you can't force this on anybody. No. There's, you know what I mean? Just like, voluntary yeah. and has to be probably active also. I, I think so. At least that's, in, that's, a, that's my interpretation of what I've seen. So anyway, um, I made a quick video. I was like, okay, everybody, whoever wants to participate, let's do this. And so I, I knew how to give one session. You know what I mean? I just think of the person and I, I let the universe take over from there. I, I just, I just give them the session. I think of them. And sometimes, sometimes I'm actually like acting like I'm giving them the session uh, and I usually start off that way. I'll imagine them in front of me like a light body um, in, a, in a variety of sizes. And I'll literally be giving them a session. But then sometimes it's like, you know, we're really all one. So I'll kind of just become them. And I will just allow these frequencies to come through me feeling like I am them. So it's... I, I think it's almost like Jesus said, you have to become like a child. And so I really play with, with different concepts. You know what I mean? There's no one way to do it. So anyway, I'm getting ready to give this session and I'm actually a little scared, not scared, but I had kind of put myself out there. I'm like, dude, you just said you were going to do this and you've never done it before. You know, like people might think you're like, not read like this. You know what I mean? Like anyway, all these limited thoughts come through my head. And um, I just kind of laughing said, okay, higher self, you got me into this mess. You take care of it. And so I just went out and I gave a session and I just said, you know, anybody that's, or anybody that's laying down, this session's for you. And that's all I thought about. I never thought about one person. And do you know, that was the most profound experience I've ever had in my life. When I actually had the nerve to go check the comments, which took me like two hours to, to get up the nerve to see what people were saying. The experiences were off the charts. There were people in countries that I didn't even know existed talking about oh. floating off the bed and seeing visions. And I was like, wow, oh, my God, this is crazy. Oh, like, it, it, and, and, and so I, I've always been one of those people that. Like when I see proof of something, then I own it. Mm. I, I don't have to keep like I knew right then. That I could give as many, I could I could give a session to as many people as they were reaching out for as, as possible. Because how many times do I have to do it before I realize that it was real? It worked, you know what yeah. I mean? I was and one then, of those probably. I, I, I joined one of those. Uh, oh, did you? Did you have any? Co collective sessions? sessions a year ago, a year and a half ago, maybe? Yeah. A year and a half ago. Did you have any sensations? I yeah, I can I kind of felt it felt good actually. It felt a little bit like it does now when I meditate in the mornings. I yeah, had perfect. this ting ting tingling sensation in, in, on the top of my head, and I I, yeah. I felt my thumbs were kind of uh, rising up. You know, they were my hands were were kind of floating a little bit over above my 
my legs, uh, which hadn't happened before. So it, yeah. I, I did feel actually some things. And so I, in, in my opinion, a seed for your healing in whatever is most appropriate for you was planted. And I would, I would like to think that, that speeded up your process of mm. stepping into your own knowing of who you are, of trusting Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. And so that's really kind of what I see myself as. Or, or, and when I say myself, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people exactly like me that mm. just came wired to do this. Yeah, you, you know, mentioned that, that some people come here wired to do these things because I was going to ask, do you think I and others can can kind of train our yeah. hands or whatever it is that we use to to do these things on other yeah. people and on ourselves? Do you think so? Yeah. So, so can you feel these frequencies in your hands? I No, I, I've, I've tried a few times actually and uh, being very, very relaxed and in the meditation uh -huh. meditation state and after, after meditation, I've tried to feel the frequencies between my hands, but I, I haven't really been able to do that. I, okay. I, I don't think, we'll, I don't think. We'll keep trying because yeah. the frequencies are going through you right now. Hmm. And, 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 and the only thing, like I, I really don't understand why everybody can't feel it. Like I, I don't. And, and to me, it's almost <laughs> like, it's like a, a radio signal. Yeah. And I think that these sessions help people to attune to that specific sensation. Yeah. And then, but my opinion is, is once you can attune to it, then you should always know exactly. It's like, if you find out it's 98.7, that's your music. Mm. Then you always know how to go back to 98.7. And mm. so I wish I could make people feel, I really do. I wish I could be like, Maybe oh. we can just invite the listeners to try themselves when they're listening to this to just uh, yeah, absolutely. check it out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, but, uh, so one thing they could do is, um, you know, basically just take your hands, have palms facing palms and have your, your hands kind of firm, you know, spread your fingers out. Um, one of the, one of the best things I heard Eric say was, uh, imagine that you have like a three-year-old child coming at you mm. and you're going to scoop them up underneath the arms But you don't want to crush them, but you don't want to be like so loose that you drop them. So have them relatively like crisp. And it helps, to, like in the beginning, it helps to like spread your fingers a little bit and kind of open up the palms. But if you imagine like a little hook in, 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 in each of your palms, mm -hmm. and if you imagine that those hooks are connected with, imagine it's, it's almost like a cobweb. Mm. thin feeling of energy. And the reason I say cobweb is because like, I don't think of cobwebs. I don't think of any of that stuff because it's just really strong all the time, but a cobweb, you're going to move really slow at first, or you'll, you'll, you'll break that connection. So when you first start trying to feel it, imagine that it's like a cobweb of energy and just slowly start moving one of your hands in small, like one inch circles. And just feel, just just feel what you feel. I mean, do you feel yeah. a tingling or do you feel a coolness or, you know, a heat or, you know, so everybody's different. But I think with the people that are supposed to do this, and, and I will say that when I first felt it, it was, it was subtle. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like overwhelming. Like if I would have felt it in the beginning, the first day, Like I feel it now, I would have jumped in the car and went to the hospital and said, dude, something's wrong with me. Like, okay. so yeah. it, it like slowly progressed, you know what I mean? And it slowly I amped up. But maybe it's different parts of the body that different people can yeah, some utilize. People uh, like, I mean, the hands obviously are very practical and, and they are, I mean, to float yeah. your hands over somebody's body is, is kind of intuitively the thing to do, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if if you don't have never heard about these things, you you if somebody is sad, you you put your hands on that person, and, and yeah. it's often eases I've, their pain. Yeah, I've definitely given people. I've definitely you know had people, and I'm like, hey man, let's see if you can feel this. And it's either that I mean, it, it, it can be all throughout the body, but the feet are actually kind of a big one too. Yeah, like 
I can feel something in my feet. It's like, okay, cool. You know, whatever. There's no right. I, I mentioned that tingling on the top of my head. It's the, yes. the crown chakra, I guess. And I can actually feel that when I meditate. It's, it's, and it's, I kind of visualize <laughs> me having a, a you know, a, a, a beam of light coming down into my body. From That's which exactly is probably what exactly what's happening. That's uh, probably so, exactly what's happening. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I mean, I, I can feel those the, some kind of energy, some kind of frequency that you're talking about. I can I can feel it, but not not particularly in my hands really. So it's yeah. it's there, but yeah. I mean, the the real key is: Are you following your passion? Yeah. Because when you follow your passion, you become the light for others. You, you really do. And, and, and the more you trust that, the more momentum you get and the brighter you shine and you become a lighthouse for people. And, and these people will be subconsciously attracted to you, subconsciously attracted to your show, and they'll resonate with whatever. Like it, it's so like I said, you know, I, I think these volunteers, we all have our own mission. We all have our own specialty. And, you know, um, do you meditate I, yourself? I, excuse me. Do you meditate? I don't really meditate. Um, my wife meditates all the time. Um, and, and one of the reasons I don't meditate, um, in on some regards, I don't meditate, but on other regards, I meditate all day. Mm. And what I mean by that is, is, is they've, they've done a lot of research on these frequencies. And so one specific uh, test that I resonated with, and maybe I just use this to justify why I don't meditate, you know, but um, one of them was um, they took, they, they took like a thousand people and they hooked them up to an EEG machine and they, they were scanning their brain waves to see, just to, just to scan their brain waves. And they found that people, their brains function at a very specific, um, what's the word, um, common frequency, um, yeah. baseline. They, they, yeah. they, they were all within a very specific baseline of, of, of the frequencies and, 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 the, and the, like the gamma waves that they're accessing their brain in. Then they brought in like professional meditators, people that meditate literally all day, like in mountains, like six months, you know what I mean? Like, the real deal, you know, the yeah, people that, you know, so they brought them in, they hooked them up to the EEG machine and they found that they, their brains function at a completely different baseline than your average person. I mean, immediately they go to the gamma state and the gamma state is that feeling of peacefulness of oneness. And, and actually I heard Daryl Anka talk um, in an interview that that communication with your higher self is that gamma state. So, mm -hmm. so clearly meditation connects you with your higher self. It, it puts you in that higher vibrating state that when you, when you're in that state, you're going to access new information from the field. You know what I mean, yeah. so if you go into a meditation and you're feeling lost and you're, you're, you're thinking of, you know, you have problems in your life, and then you go into that meditational state and you raise your frequency into that gamma state, you're going to be accessing literally different information from the field than you were before. And sometimes, you know, we, we get out of this meditation and we have the answers that we've been looking for. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like th th there's a new clarity that comes after meditating. And it's because you, you're raising your, your body up to that state. Exactly. Exactly. So then they took in, they started bringing in energy healers, but when they brought in reconnective healing practitioners and they hooked them up and they said, okay, bring in the frequency, you know, I don't even know what that means. Like, like I, I, I do it all the time. So I, it's almost like you can't turn it off, you know, like yeah, continue doing what you're doing all the time. Yeah. It's just like, it's always on. So when they did that, those registered, the, they were a, a, a completely above the meditators. Oh, really? So, yeah. I, so my point is, is if I'm always bringing these frequencies in, it's like, could you imagine if I gave like three or four sessions? And so that means I probably spent two hours completely in completely lost in these frequencies. Mm. Besides the time I'm at the refrigerator and they're coming through or I'm, 
you know, like they're always coming through. Mm. And it's almost like, could you imagine after that, if I felt this need to go meditate, like it's mm-hmm. like a desperate, like, yeah, yeah. Like I feel great. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> I, I, I totally, I totally understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe meditation is more for the other people like, like me and others here who, who don't really have these frequencies on all the time. We, we can use this because but, then we can raise our. Medita- vibration I, I would say meditation is absolutely the greatest thing anyone can do. Mm-hmm. Like I, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the greatest thing anybody can do. Mm. It, it, yes. You mentioned the higher self and the soul and everything. How, what's, what's the essence of a human being? This is a small question. <laughs> you can answer in 30 seconds. The no, but essence of a how, human do you, how do you, how do you, see, yeah. How do you see it, the whole thing working? Are we accessing the, the higher self when we are uh, accessing these frequencies or meditating as we are talking about here? And, is there is a soul above that? How 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 does it work? Well, that is that, that is entering bodies uh, in continuous life lifetimes here on Earth. I, I would work. think. My opinion is the, the 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 real us would be the oversoul, the full version of us. So the oversoul is this being of consciousness that could literally manifest. I, I, I think to grow and to have these experiences, like my oversoul could have, and your oversoul and everybody's oversoul, you could have like 25,000 incarnations right now on the planet. Meaning mm-hmm. there's 25,000 physical bodies on this planet connected to my oversoul and in, dif- in different times as well? As no, we, yeah, as we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's see time. I'm, I'm talking right. like everything is happening now, the past, the future. But yeah. I'm talking about in this current timeline, yeah. my oversoul could have 25,000 aspects of itself mm-hmm. manifested. Mm-hmm. Now, am, is, is Case, me, the physical body, connected to that? Like, no, it's like it. That's not me. That's my oversoul. So there's a connection to me, almost like family. You know how you go through life and you meet certain people, and you just right away you resonate with them. Something feels yeah. right, yeah. and you can't even define it. I mean, you could know them for like a half hour, and you're like, I love this person. Mm-hmm. I I believe that there's a reason that we love them, and I, I believe that. They're part of us. And, and so in, in those ways, I think, I think we're all connected and like we're connected with other parts of our oversoul, but then there's like families of oversouls. And so on the grand scheme of things, we're completely connected and we're all one. That would be like the outer layer of mm. the onion. Mm. Whereas the physical body is more of like the core of the onion. And then the next layer would be like your higher self, almost mm. like the intermediary the coach of the oversoul. So where so, does the sense of individuality start and end? Because I guess at some point you're, you don't, you're not an individual anywhere anymore. The, the, the further up you go, so to speak, in the yeah, um, towards source. Or well, whatever. we're, we're at the base right now. The yeah. physical body is the, the, is, the tough is, base. Yeah. 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 So, so, and I think really like it, all you have to do is just become aware that there is a non-physical part of you that's with you, guiding you. And dude, you don't have to worry about anything else. You don't have, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like the fish in the water. We're never going to fully understand, you know, this, this, how we're all connected. In my life, I just see proof and evidence of how we are connected. And and so I'm good with that. Like, I, I don't really need to intellectually understand the rest because it's not really valid for my life. Like it, it's, I, I, I don't know. You know, I like to think of it. Like I've always felt like this, this game of physicality and separation on earth is, is, is like a class, like a, a, a school. You can, yeah. I like to prefer it as a game. And so stage play, maybe a, a stage play. Exactly. Shakespeare had, he nailed it. With with his 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 um, yes. 
analogy. So what I would say is the oversoul decides to come play this game on earth. It decides what the situation that it's, it's, it's going to grow and learn in the ways that that oversoul wants to experience, wants to grow from, to be more rounded, more, more evolved, a complete understanding. Um, so the oversoul would choose uh, the family, the culture, you know, like the, 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 you know, that aspect of where we're going to manifest. It would take a small aspect of itself and allow that to manifest in the physical. Mm -hmm. So I guess my point is like, if we're playing a video game and on some levels, it, it's a really good metaphor that we are playing a game. Mm -hmm. We are the character in the game. The oversoul chose to play the game. The controller, the, the, the controller you would use to play the game, yeah. that's the higher self. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm repairing the cable that the remote control is. So we're down here in the game and we're cut off from the controller, from the guidance that the, the, the higher self has to offer. So we're in the game. We think we're alone. We're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And but the, the, the higher self is sending us signals like, hey, man, no, 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 not that. That's not that's not in your best interest. Like, you know, like it, it's giving us signals. But the, the communication, that cable that's connecting the, the remote control to the game is glitchy. And so my job is to repair that cable. Yeah. And so you now so, so once that's repaired, then you receive the guidance. You're like, oh, wait, wait, this doesn't feel right. I don't think I want to do this. I have this feeling I should go back the other way. Yeah. And so. And then it runs that, more smoothly. Life runs more smoothly. Life runs things. more smoothly. We, and, and another thing is like when you get this guidance, sometimes this guidance doesn't really make rational, logical sense. So we don't trust it. So we, so we go with the rational mind, we go with the logical mind, and we find ourselves in situations that are just unhealthy for us. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we would have went with that instinct that went against our rational mind, we would, we would find ourselves in a much smoother existence, making better decisions that, that are expanding us yeah. and fulfilling, that are more and fulfilling in yeah. our life. It's so difficult for us to understand that the smoothest and best way for us is not always the straight line. And we have yeah. such a hard time understanding that it, it, it might be crooked, you know, it goes like this winding, but that's, that's the, the path that is best for us in our lives. These yeah. are the people that you should meet and these are the, happy, the, the events that you should experience. You shouldn't go yeah. straight line because there are potholes on that way. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. I, I actually Bashar spoke about exactly this today when I was listening to him. Oh, did he? I, I, I love that. I, I think mm. his teaching is amazing. And you know, one of the things that's really, really important for you on your path is to not judge other people's paths. Mm. Because as soon as you become judgmental of their past and the way they're doing it, you're actually creating friction in your path. We're all allowed to do our own thing. Now, obviously, mm. the higher your vibration, you're going to understand that you would never hurt anyone else. You know what I mean? Like you, because, you know, there's a way to do what you want to do without hurting anybody. And so, you know, when some people say, oh, you allow other people to do their own path. Well, yeah, you, you do. You, you, you have to, you have to allow the so-called low frequency, low vibrating people to evolve do their path. space. Yeah. yeah. And, and really your job is just to follow your path and to be the example, really. Um, yeah. Now we're talking about individual evolution here. Uh, and, but we have this collective, this earth, which is just this little small, tiny speck of a planet in, in this big universe, which is probably just a little speck of, a university in a bigger anyway we're we're here on this earth and, and and for the first time in recorded history at least it might have been 
like that before, but as far as we know, the world human, human, humanity is integrating for the first time. We know in real time what's happening on the other side of the planet. And this 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 hasn't happened before as, as far as we know, maybe during Atlantean times, I don't know. Anyway, so this does things to us. And right now, the world seems a little bit chaotic. It's been chaotic many times, but it seems a bit chaotic. And what do you think about that? What's 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 going on in the world? Is it is it uh, a benevolent chaos that we're seeing? Is it an awakening, or is it it's is it going down the drain? I believe we'll see. It's I, I believe both. I, I believe that it is a benevolent chaos. But see, this is where you lose a lot of people when they start assuming that there's only one reality. Mm -hmm. And I actually believe that there's a multitude of realities. And I, I, I believe that I believe that for years and years and years, we have suppressed, we have pushed away and hidden this, this dark aspect of ourselves, And I, I, I think that with the rising energy on the planet, that everything is coming up to the surface to be healed. There, there are no more secrets. Uh, so, so everything is rising up. So that's, that's, that's the benevolent part is everything is rising to, to be seen for what it is. You know what I mean? Like no more, no more secrets or, 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 or so, so I, I believe that's the benevolent part, but I, I, I go back to that, you know, are we headed in the wrong direction or are we headed in the right direction? Well, that's up to you. Like, like there is no one future. There is a multitude of futures and you, we are deciding which future we're sliding to right now. And now I know this sounds crazy and people are going to think this guy, he is so out of touch with the reality um, <laughs> that he, he he's really needs to go back and smoke some more weed because he's lost it. <laughs> But the truth is we are not living. We are not sharing We're not living in the same reality. For me to go back, for me to think, when was the last time someone screwed me over? When was the last time someone was rude to me? I can't even remember mm. somebody being rude to me. I cannot remember because that's not in me. I, the world is reflecting my inner belief. Now, if I look into the external world, I see the chaos, but it's not affecting my reality. It, it's literally not. And people can think, oh, you live and you stick your head in the sand. Whatever that they don't understand how this reality is working. It's not like when I was into that, when I was into how much we were being controlled. And I felt like, oh my God, we're killing the environment. Oh my God, we're being controlled. I experienced that in every experience I had with people. Mm -hmm. Like I could feel it in my body. And, and so when you have those beliefs, the world is only going to reflect the mirror of that back. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's validating. So your beliefs are always self-validating. But when you change your beliefs, your experiences change to match your new beliefs. So I'm not living in a world that's headed towards chaos and destruction. I'm headed towards a world where people are waking up and we're realizing, wait a second, you don't destroy the environment. You don't hurt people because there are certain, like, like you know what I mean? Like I'm sliding to a different reality than We're all sliding to different realities. And I know it sounds crazy, but it, I, I, I love my favorite thing is, is when somebody watches me and they go, uh, I don't know, this dude's a little out of it. Like, I don't know about <laughs> it. And then like three years what later. What do you mean? In what, in what context? Every context. Every context. My context mm -hmm. is like an oversoul. My context is like the multiverse, the, these frequencies and, and our vibration and how when your vibration rises. But I mean, when, actually, when are people saying these things, looking at you? Oh, and, and say, well, I, I've had people that come across one of my videos and they'll resonate with it long enough to watch it. But then I'll say something and it's just too much. And then they just turn it off and they think I'm crazy. Yeah. And then two or three years later, 
They stumble across another of my videos, but now they're at a different place. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And now they go, oh shit, that crazy dude makes sense now. Yeah. So those are my favorite. Like literally when people go, dude, I thought you were crazy mm. three years ago, but mm. now I, I, I think I get what you're saying. I just mm. love that. Like I, I really do, man, because yeah. that's, that's the way I was. I thought yeah. all this was yeah. crazy. I, I, yeah. I, I just, I love that, that how we evolve. And, and mm. I love, I just, I love the whole process. I love because everybody that's asleep right now, dude, one day they'll wake up. It, yeah. We're in no rush. Like when, when the time's There's right. Like, anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, like, like literally life, I just see life as everything's kind of perfect. Even the sleep mm. people, it's like, dude, it's perfect. You got time. Like, yeah. I, I, I just feel like the more the more I progress, the less judgment I have, the more gratitude I have. And that gets more momentum into less judgment and less judgment. Um, I mean, I still have my judgment, dude. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not like I'm not saying that I don't have judgment. You know, in fact, just last night I got in this like kind of argument with my daughter that I made this comment that I thought Cardi B was slutty. Mm-hmm. And my daughter just jumped on me and she, and my, gar, my, my daughter doesn't know Cardi B. She, she doesn't know any of her music. And she was like, don't, you should never call anyone slutty ever. And I was kind of like, well, you know, if you, if you talk like a slut and you act like a slut and you dress like a slut and you like, then you can say that you're kind of slutty. And she was, see my, my kids, man, is, is, as evolved as I think I am. My children see me as like Archie Bunker. Like, do you know Archie Bunker? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't No, I don't. I know about Cardi B, but. I, okay. Cardi well, anyway. And, and, and so, you know what? They were actually right. They, 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 they were right, but I go into this defensive mode because sometimes my children, I, I feel like. Well, I that's like a children so, parent thing also, you know. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a weird. Uh, but anyway, when I feel like I'm being judged as like this ancient eight track person that is totally out of the loop, I get the little defensive. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm sure I have you know, beliefs that I'm still letting go of, but dude, on some edge, some way I'm cutting edge, dude. So cut me some slack. You know what I mean? So yes. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, you know, you still have the, the still issues of you're human. You know, we're human. We're, we're, I don't know. Yeah. It's a great game. We're all yeah. human. Even we're all human, human man. Human. The best we can. <laughs> well, that's a nice note maybe to, to wrap this thing up. We've been talking for a long time and it's been, it's been wonderful. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your new, Plans? I think you have some interesting. Is it film plans or stage play plans or? Oh, you know what? It's actually. Uh, is it secret? Perhaps. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, uh, um, you know, and it, 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 it's back to following those passions, and it's back to yeah. letting go of those limited beliefs. I had told myself for some reason that I'm not a good writer. I, I like I, I. That's that's a that's in my programming, and I I've. I've That's in my programming that's been running for decades and decades and decades. And that's because a teacher, when I was young, told me that I wasn't a good writer. Mm -hmm. And I just owned that. And so I always said, oh, writing is difficult for me. And then um, I realized that I'm actually a good storyteller. And what's the difference between storytelling and writing, dude? It's the same thing. Same difference. Same difference. So... um, you know, I might have to work at it a little bit harder than somebody that comes natural to, but that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with working hard. It's something that you're passionate about. So I had this idea about this. You know, I, I live a pretty interesting life, and I thought that maybe I should tell uh, a story, yeah. this story. And so I wrote it into a film. Um, I, I started off as a script, and it was funny. As soon as I started writing the script, I started having clients – that were writers and they oh. were like in the industry. So it was almost like I started, I started attracting the right people. I Before I knew nobody. 
And then I start writing. And then all of a sudden I start the universe allows me to start attracting people that can help me. I love so the um, I wrote the script. Um, I worked on it for about eight months, uh, realized, and then I let, I let it go for like three or four months, and I realized I got a lot of work to do. So now I've actually been um, developing it into a series, like a, a limited 10-episode 10, 10 series. So I don't know where it's headed. Mm-hmm. I know it's a really cool story, and I know it's real. And I, I, I mean, from my perspective, it feels so right that I have to do it. And I really feel like it has the potential to reach a thousand times more people that I reach with my little YouTube channel. So I I really see this. um, I mean, it's just, it's just a really good, um, I think it would be, it's, it's a character driven story about basically what I, what's happening in my life and these people it's, it's kind of. Have you ever seen that video, the volunteers, the 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 eight minute video I made with my daughters? Uh, I, I, I saw a very short video that you did with your daughter, uh, maybe a year ago or so. They were having a telepathic conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yeah. girls. Yes, telepathic conversation. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Too. So it's basically that's the concept, but it's actually with characters. Okay. And, and, characters. And yeah. it, it's it's it's. Um, so there's going to be TV, I, I really TV series of some kind. TV series? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. whatever, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I did write a children's book, and I'm just waiting on um, the right illustrator. Oh. So if there's any illustrators out there. Um, they're going to they're gonna reach out to you now when they hear I, this? That would, be, that would be perfect. That would be perfect. <laughs> it's so, going to happen. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Case, beautiful, wonderful to have you on the show, and good luck with all the beautiful things that, that you do. I, As you... As you would have put it, peace. (laughs) Thank you so much, man. I had a great time. Peace.